All right. Uh, hi, everyone. Welcome to this talk um, on making Raku optimized for fun for, for everyone. Um, I'm going to be talking about various paths into the Raku programming language, um, ways that different members of the community or people who are curious about Raku can sort of have paths into learning more about, about this language that I love. Um, but first, maybe some introductions are in order. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Daniel Sockwell. You might know me by code sections from various uh, usernames online. I, other than Raku, I have a background in JavaScript, a, a few Lisps, and uh, most recently before Raku Rust. Um, I am a member of the Raku Steering Council uh, on the board of the Perl Foundation, and before switching to programming was a, a practicing attorney. Um, if we're doing introductions, I guess I should also say a little bit about who I believe you all to be, both here in person and, and watching the video later. Um, like I said, this is a talk that is designed to um, be Raku for everyone, so I, I am aiming this at an audience of everyone. Um, more specifically, anyone who would like to learn Raku, who is a practicing Raku coder, or who would like to teach others Raku, and I, I hope that many in the audience are in two or maybe even all three of those categories. I, I certainly think of myself as someone who is still learning Raku and someone who is teaching Raku and someone who is writing as much Raku as I can. Um, and so now that we, we've met each other, um, an overview of what I, I'd like to talk about today, like I said, I'm going to be talking about different paths in that could get everyone into to Raku. And there are a lot of great options, and from timing my slides a, a little while ago, I, I may run long because there are so many that I, I want to talk about, so I may be yanked off the stage with one of those, those hooks. Um, but with as many great options as there are, it's definitely not perfect. Um, and so part of my goal with this presentation is, for those of you who are a bit more familiar with Raku, to give sort of a path forward for how you can help. Um, so for, for each at, uh, different path that someone could learn Raku, I'm also going to highlight in blue ways that if you feel more comfortable with Raku, you could help um, make that. Uh, I'm going to highlight in blue in ways that probably can't actually be seen <laughs> uh, in this lighting. So uh, there's nothing in my slides that, that um, I'm not going to be saying. So you're, you're not going to be missing anything if you can't read um, the, the slides right now. I don't have any code. This is a much more high level talk. Um, and, and I'll make these slides available um, afterwards. Mostly what they're, they're there for is for you to have URLs and, and reference materials um, in any event. Um, but so you may not be able to see it, but in each case, I will be calling out ways that you can help if you are somebody who's more comfortable with Raku. So the, the first path in, and the one that I would, would most recommend if I were, you know, if somebody came to me and said, I know nothing about Raku, where do I start? I would want to give them a more structured introduction. Um, and so I'd want to give them a course uh, or a book and specifically, specifically, the one that I would probably start with is Andrew Shitov's A Complete Course of Raku, which, despite the name, is not yet complete. It is currently an incomplete, complete course, but it is a um, totally free um, ebook slash course that lays out a very structured, you know, lesson one, lesson two, lesson three approach to learning Raku. Um, if you are looking for something that is complete, there's the Raku Guide or Learn Raku in Y Minutes, both of which are, are much more abbreviated um, and less in detail, but um, have the, the virtue of already being complete. There are also many Raku books that are, are not as freely available, so a bit more of a, an ask if you're you know, giving it to somebody who is not sure what, uh, about learning Raku, but um, I can personally vouch for the ones by Moritz. I, I believe many of the others to be excellent based on what I know about their authors, but I, I haven't read them. Um, if this is an area that you think you could help in, you can submit issues to at least the uh, Andrew's complete course of Raku. I know it accepts issues. I, I believe the others do as well. Um, but 
you know, so that is an area where you can, can jump in and, and help if you see anything wrong or, or just think that there could be a better approach to explaining something. Okay, so the, the next step after um, the, you know, the very structured approach of a course or um, book is the official documentation, which given the size of the record language um, and the, the breadth of, and the flexibility of it, the official docs are extremely active and um, they're, they're always aiming at a moving target. So it's hard for them to be 100% up to date, but there's a tremendous amount of activity and a tremendous amount of energy there um, with the goal of producing something that is both a, a usable comprehensive reference to the record language and uh, something that is readable for programmers of, of various different abilities. So it's, it's a pretty ambitious project um, and one that could, could certainly use more help uh, um, if, if that's an area where you can contribute. It also, and more on this in, on the next slide, it acts as a source repository for other less official forms of documentation. Um, so the the source of the official docs is in uh, pod six mark, markup format, and then that is compiled to HTML for the official documentation, but can be compiled to different front ends um, for, for less official documentation. So even if you don't really like the, the look of the official docs, you might want to contribute to the source of the official docs as a way to make uh, unofficial docs have, have better content as well. Um, if you are able to help with, with the documentation, I have very good news for you. There is a documentation working group here at this conference on Friday, this room, uh, in, in two days, one, 1 to 3.30, and that, I hope, will be a, a good way for anyone, you know, if you have thought about making a PR but weren't sure about having, you know, hadn't cloned the repo and weren't sure all the steps to uh, build the docs locally or just need some help getting over that, that hump, this can be a great way to sort of get set up so that you can make those, uh, you know, two-line doc PRs that are so helpful um, in the future. Or if you already are set up, this can be a, a way for us to sort of work together and power through some of the um, more stubborn issues that have, have hung around in, in the docs repo for a while. Um, so that's, that's the official docs. Um, and then, then, as I mentioned, there are also um, custom docs. This is something that is very new and very active. So it, everything I say, for those of you watching the recording, may be out of date by the time you watch this. Um, it's, it's an area that's definitely in flux. But there are these alternate front ends that are going to build from the same source materials, um, but, but present them in a way that could be more useful or more readable or, or just a different look. And so that's something that you can contribute to independent of, of contributing to the, the source. Or you can even start your own alternate front end and there's, there's some process for that, but if you have a vision for, for what the Raku docs really should look like, there's, there's definitely a way to, to make that vision a reality. Um, the, the next thing I want to talk about in terms of making Raku, the Raku community welcoming to everyone and optimized for fun for everyone is the Raku Code of Conduct. Um, and this, this touches on a good bit of what Ruth was talking about in the, the previous presentation. Um, but, if, but because we want to have paths in for, for everyone, the, Raku is really committed to being a welcoming, safe, and inclusive space. Um, we've, we have an official code of conduct. Um, we adopted it a couple years ago now. And it, it has the advantage of covering all Raku spaces, including, you know, for example, this conference. Like, just by being members of the Raku community, the Raku code of conduct applies to Raku community members here in addition to the, the conference's own uh, code of conduct. And um, part of the aim of, of that and of the code of conduct more broadly is having a set of rules that we have discussed as a community and reach consensus around as a community in advance of, of any issue coming up. Um, you know, it's, it's always much more fraught to talk about um, a particular incident where there are social dynamics and 
uh, all the complexities there by talking about and agreeing on some rules ahead of time. Um, we have a, a framework for making the Raku community safe and inclusive um, that we were able to discuss and agree on before, we, we, outside of that context, and when we could think about things with a bit more remove. Um, the code of conduct has been applied in practice so far so good, although, you know, I don't want to jinx anything. Um, and there are various ways you can help with the code of conduct. I mean, you know, you can suggest changes or, or um, do anything in the normal way um, of a living document with, with Raku, but the big thing that we really need help with is if there is any conduct that violates the code of conduct to please, please report it. Um, you know, I, I believe President Obama described the, the Declaration of Independence as the truths may be self-evident, but they're not self-enforcing. And, and it's definitely true for the code of conduct that the code of conduct is not self-enforcing. It's some words on paper that I hope are pretty good words, but if people don't report any violations, they're, they're not worth the paper that I'm not sure they've even been printed out on because it's, it's on a website. Um, the next sort of path in that I'd like to talk about is exorcism, which is actually one of the ways I, I first got into Raku. It is a set of guided exercises in a variety of different programming languages, but crucially, it is one that has, where people have volunteered to be mentors, so you don't just submit an exercise and have it checked, you get uh, feedback from someone who can tell you like, yes, that worked, here's another way you could have done it. Yes, that worked, but this is how an uh, idiomatic style would have it. And given that the flexibility and the Tim Toady nature of Raku, where there's always more than one way to do it, that, that is especially helpful for Raku because it's not the case that, you know, well, if it compiles, it's perfect and I don't need any feedback other than what I get from the compiler. It's, it's really nice to have that, that back and forth feedback. Um, and I found it incredibly helpful when I was first starting with Raku. And one of the things that I think Raku the, we in the Raku community should be very proud of is how responsive we are. You know, in, in some language tracks, there's a very long lag. You know, you submit something a week later, you get feedback on it, and you're struggling to remember the code you wrote. With Raku, because we have a very good student mentor ratio, and because many of the mentors are so uh, responsive, there's there's much more of that. Like, turn something in the next day, you get your feedback, and it's it's a much better learning process. Um, and I, I think something we should be proud of. You know, for comparison, many of the other programming languages have much worse uh, student mentor ratios. And speaking personally, I, I think that the responsiveness of Raku is even better than, than those ratios might indicate. Um, so if you'd like to help here, you can sign up to be a mentor. You can also uh, propose new questions that can be added as new exercises, you know, prompt with, with a model solution. Um, and a, a way to automatically uh, evaluate its correctness. Um, the, similarly, Stack Overflow is another way that there is that sort of back and forth, less with a, a working solution and yes, but here's a more idiomatic, but more just question and answer. I'm sure you all know. But again, Raku, I think, should be very proud of the um, much more collaborative, much more iterative approach. We have Stack Overflow, we have really a staggering 97% of our questions answered for comparison. Uh, JavaScript has 70%, Python has 70%, Ruby has just under 80, Go has under 80. Um, so, you know, we, we have done a very good job of saying if you're stuck, you can post on Stack Overflow and someone will probably help get you unstuck. And I think that that's a real strength of, of our community in terms of onboarding new people, um, but it's one that could always use more help. So you know that's, that's a good way to help out as well, asking questions or answering questions on Stack Overflow. And, and I wanna really highlight the ask. Um, because we are a smaller community, there are some, some good questions that people might have but have, have just not yet asked. Um, another slightly less formal avenue for that sort of back and forth are the Raku subreddit or other forms of asynchronous communication. Um, 
we've got over 1,200 raccoons registered on, on the subreddit. Uh, Rosetta Code also has a really staggering, um, and, and Bruce, you might be able to tell me how, how this has happened, but it, it looks like Raku has completed about 1,500 out of the 1,200 tasks listed on, on Rosetta Code, so we've, we've accomplished something, some pretty impressive coverage numbers there. I'm, I'm not quite sure how we pulled that off, but yeah. <laughs> well, I guess there is more than one way to do it. Um, I, I think that Twitter is also a, a way that people discuss Raku. I don't have a Twitter account, um, but I believe that the Raku Lang hashtag is used for asynchronous discussions on Twitter. Um, I, I do have a, a Fediverse Mastodon account, um, so if you want to discuss Raku on there, you know, the, there's also you know, hashtags and, and various asynchronous communications that happen there. And the way you can help with any of those is just say hi and be friendly. Um, finally, we have the more synchronous forms of communication, uh, IRC or other chat. We have uh, Raku, Raku Beginners, and several Raku Dev and, and other dev-specific channels or topic-specific Crow or, or other uh, specific applications within the, the Raku frame, uh, ecosystem have their own channels. Um, so, you know, stop by uh, another path for someone coming to Raku is to just ask questions much more synchronously. There's also a Discord bridge um, that, that takes you into those, um, those chat channels as well. And then how you can help. One, one issue, and this is true for the subreddit and uh, Stack Overflow and, and all of the other interactive platforms, but I'm, I'm going to specifically call it out here, one way that you can really help on IRC is by telling the IRC mods or the Raku Community Affairs team about any issues that violate the code of conduct. Um, the, the IRC as a synchronous medium of communication, it's a little easier for people's wires to get crossed for something to turn into a, a personal attack or, or fight in a way that would violate our community and would not present the community that we, we want to, especially for um, new raccoons. So it is, that, it, that is an especially important way to, to be able to help uh, have the, the welcoming and inclusive community that we'd like um, is to do so on the IRC channels. And then beyond that, just saying hi, being friendly raccoons, answering people's questions, that's, that's another way that someone, if you are a bit more experienced, you can help out tremendously through, through the IRC um, platform. And that's, that's pretty much it. Um, I wanna say that Raku really does optimize already to be um, fun for everyone and inclusive and welcoming and have all of these different paths so that everyone can get into, um, get into Raku. But I think that we're you know, uh, a community-driven language and community, so we are far from perfect. So let's, let's work to make it even more optimized um, and just, you know, in, in the spirit of, of Camilla and our, you know, friendly butterfly mascot, let's, let's try and, and work together and, and make Raku optimize for fun. Thank you very much. I ran a little bit over, but I know there's a little bit of time for questions, if anyone has any. Or, or if not, I'm happy to uh, chat with you all over, over lunch or um, hallway track to the extent we have a hallway. I, I guess it's more of a lobby track in, in this venue. All right, thank you very much.